So the 2013 All-Ireland Football Semi-Final was undoubtedly the greatest game I've ever been to as a fan. You know, it's, it's undoubtedly the best game I've ever seen live. Quality of football that was on show that day. You had the Kerry team that was very much at its pinnacle with players like Kieran Donaghy, Colin Cooper, James O'Donoghue, Tommaso Shea. You had a Dublin side that of course was fresh off winning the All-Ireland two years previous, was about to enter its period of domination under Jim Gavin, his first year in charge. Now, I've also had the privilege as a Dublin fan to have seen many big games, even going back to some of the big games in Leinster down the years in 2005, 2009. Um, and of course, obviously the 2011 All-Ireland Final, the only All-Ireland Final I've been to, probably the best one, but definitely the best game I have ever seen live was the 2013 All-Ireland uh, Football Semi-Final. And what I thought I would do is the GEA have obviously released a lot of classic games from down the years, including All-Ireland Finals, Semi-Finals, Big Games, Dublin Games, Kerry Games, Limerick, Cork, absolutely everything. And what I thought I would do is react to some of those games, re-watch some of those games, give my opinions, my thoughts and analysis on them. Yeah lads, what I thought I would do today is look at the 2013 All-Ireland Semi-Final because obviously, as I just said, this was the best game I've ever seen live. And yeah lads, let's jump straight into it. But yeah guys, do let me know down in the comments below what was the best game you lads seen live. I mean, for me this final was, it was just incredible in many ways. I mean, I remember sitting, I think I was in the Nally stand, so I was close to hit, I wasn't on Hill 16, but I was kind of just, just off the corner of it. Um, still at all standing zone. And the angle I had was really good. Like it was literally like looking directly out on you know on the side of the pitch so right in the corner so i could see a perfect view of every goal that went in um, and there were a lot of goals that day i um, mean you're looking at that Kerry side that had you know colin cooper tomas o'shea james o'donoghue dublin as well i mean what a team they had as well i mean there's jack mccaffrey that was the first year he really kind of came alive floating the ball to michael darren mccauley and of course he gets the first score it's a great one i mean look at that play as well i mean see this is when both sides just went for it I mean, the All-Ireland final that year between Dublin and Mayo, that was actually kind of very disappointing, but Dublin and Kerry both just went for it in that semi-final. There was no hesitation. They both just went for it. And Dublin, to be fair, that day defensively were all over the place. I mean, Kerry should have beaten Dublin that year. I mean, although Dublin went on to... I mean, they lost the, the semi-final a year later against Donegal, then went on to win the five in a row. But Dublin were very vulnerable, even in those early Jim Gavin years. They still had a lot of defensive frailties and still hadn't figured everything out. And they were still very beatable. I mean, we've seen that the year later when Donegal beat them. It's a great point there by James who Look at that. Brilliant. Bernard Brogan on the turn. Look at that. Brilliant point. Classic Bernard Brogan. I, I often feel like Bernard Brogan, he's sort of like the forgotten man for Dublin in many ways. I mean, he sort of... I feel like if he had been playing for any other county, he still would have been playing right up until the moment he retired. I know he got on the bench for the, the All-Ireland final replay this year, or last year, but I feel like if this had been... If it had been any other county, he would have played. Darren McConnelly, of course, as well. I mean, it's, it's incredible, really, when you look at some of the players Dublin have had and have not played in the past two or three years when they've won all Ireland. It's virtually unheard of. They've almost got two or three different teams that could come in at any stage, which is kind of crazy. There's Tommaso Shea. Feels weird seeing him on the pitch now. I'm so used to seeing him on the Sunday game. Colin Cooper, look at that for a pass. Brilliant play. Oh, what a goal by Donahue. That's vintage Kerry right there. I'm not gonna lie, I remember, because I was, I was literally, I was at the, close to the Hill 16 end, so I remember seeing that goal going in, going in and literally when it went in, I was like, oh. Dublin are in trouble here today because that, that's that's Kerry at their very best right there. Bernard Brogan looking out for a take. Here's a chance for Dublin. Oh, he puts it wide. He's so close. Do you know what the funny thing is? I haven't seen this game in ages. I haven't seen this game in years. I don't think I've actually seen the highlights of this game since... Probably since the, the Sunday game that night of, of the game when I came home. To be honest, I can't remember seeing it since. So this almost feels like a fresh reaction in many ways. I remember Kerry got a load of quick goals in this game though. They had like, they were a good bit in front. They kind of shocked Dublin. I think they scored three goals in the first half. Was that right? We'll see. Darren O'Sullivan. See what's happening here is Dublin are sort of, they're standing too much off Kerry. They're allowing them to play their game. Kerry are able to get possession, just knock it around comfortably. They're stopping Kerry from scoring points, but they're leaving men free. And Dunica Walsh is able to just slot home. And that's, a, that's an easy goal there. For Dunica Walsh. I mean, it's not an easy goal, but he, he slotted it very well. But see, I think that was the problem with Dublin in that game. As you can see there, two, three players all trying to press. 
uh, the gooch Colin Cooper there, and he he's able to basically lift the ball into Dunica Walsh, who's completely free. And Dublin, I think Dublin were very worried about some of Kerry's top players like Colin Cooper, Tommaso Shea. They were really trying to press them, stop them from playing, but actually what they were doing is they were leaving other men free. Dublin's defence that year was very weak. I remember Cork as well gave Dublin a couple of problems that year. And there was the response, look at that for a goal. Paul Mannion, brilliant, brilliant finish that. Dublin, Dublin had a ha habit of scoring those kind of goals as well. Just long ball lifted in. We've seen that, I think it was the same in the All-Ireland Final as well. Um, versus Mayo, where a long ball from Bernard Brogan was, was touched in. Um, or it was a long ball from Paul Flynn and Bernard Brogan ended up touching it into the back of the net. Just fisted it past the, uh, the Mayo goalkeeper at the time. Kieran Kilkenny was another long ball. Kerry were struggling with them, weren't they, in this game? So Dublin just had a bit more physicality about them. Bernard Brogan again on the turn. He just knows where the, where the posts are. He doesn't even have to have a look. Just literally gets it, turns, boom, over the bar. Left foot, right foot, no problem. Tommaso so Shea going down the line. I think this is where Kerry got their third goal. Here's Colm Cooper. Dublin are just so open here. Cooper takes the point this time. There was something about Kerry in them years when they came to Dublin. It was the same in 2009. And even in, not so much in 2011, but even at stages, Kerry would just shine against Dublin at Crow Park. Especially this team, Colm Cooper, Dunica Walsh, James O'Donoghue, all these guys. Um, they would all just seem to come alive when they played Dublin. And they just relished in playing in front of Hill 16. So we're, we're level here basically at the moment. 106 to 203. And James, I don't know who's going to put Kerry in front. No, it's hit the post. And that's a penalty. Yeah, Stephen Cluxton bringing him down. I remember thinking at the time, I was like, Dublin are about to concede three goals inside 20 minutes versus Kerry. That's insane. That's mental. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a clear penalty. I mean, Stephen Cluxton's brought him down there. Stephen Cluxton, definitely one of the best, you know, probably the best goalkeeper in Gaelic football history. But he did have a mistake or two in him. He would make mistakes the odd time. Maybe because of how good Dublin are, he, he got away with them and they were swept under the carpet. But he did make mistakes at times. That's a brilliant finish from uh, James O'Donoghue there. Three goals inside 20 minutes from Kerry. I mean, for Kerry fans watching at that time, I mean, that, that must have been great. Like, three goals inside 20 minutes. I mean, you've only got three points. You're only three points ahead of Dublin at that stage. But you must be thinking, like, today's our day. We, you know, we're going to get to that 2013 All-Ireland final. You probably would have won it as well. I reckon you would have beat Mayo. And obviously, Kerry won the All-Ireland a year later. So it would have made it two in a row. Bernard Brogan, Johnny Cooper, great ball. Let's play from Dublin again. Another long ball. Long ball. Look at that. Look. This time, it just bounces all the way over the bar. It's definitely Dublin's tactic in that game. Just lofting the long ball into... Bernard Brogan, Paul Mannion. Kerry were struggling with that a bit. I think Kerry were pressing up very high on Dublin and that allowed them to really get a lot of goal chances. But I think Dublin's way of kind of counteracting that was long balls over the top. Um, it didn't always work, but of course they got the goal from it and a couple of points came from that as well. Here's Dublin being a bit more direct now. Michael Darren McCauley puts it over the bar. It's actually Jerry Brennan. Look at that pace, man. Look at that power. Crazy stuff right there, man. Look at that pass. Look at that skill. Oh, he beats him. Sure, Brennan doesn't know where to look. Darren O'Sullivan, remember him as well. He was another top player, like he was one of the best for Kerry. Colin Cooper, oh, that's vintage, isn't it? It's vintage. Do you know what? Like, even though I'm a Dublin fan, like you have to admire this Kerry side at times, like the way they play. Especially back then. Maybe it's easier to look back on it now, given what's happened since. Um, but even back then, like, Kerry just had something special about them, the way they played. Like, it'd be very interesting to see, like, the Kerry team in their absolute prime. So, like, the Kerry team of 2008, 2009, coming up against the Dublin team now. Still think Dublin would probably beat them. But how would, how would Kerry fare? Like, would it be as close as what the All-Ireland final was recently? Look at that, James. I don't know who beating two, three players, putting over the bar. Kerry's pace in this game, Dublin can't deal with them. Dublin just can't seem to get a hold of Kerry's forwards. Look at this. James O'Donoghue who picks up the ball, goes around one. The problem is a lot of Dublin players are just racing at the Kerry forwards who have the ball on the forward line and they're leaving too many players free. They're not they're not being disciplined enough in defence, and that, that's what's after costing them in this first half. Kieran Kilkenny. Oh, that's a brilliant point. <sighs> brilliant point. And that was when Kieran Kilkenny was just coming into 
his prime at Dublin, like 2013, that's when he really started coming into it. Look at that for a finish. Right, here we go on to the second half. I'd say the only thing is with Kerry, the amount of goal chances they had, the amount of opportunities they had. Look, here's another one, look. Darren O'Sullivan doesn't take the opportunity. Dublin get back very quickly. That's better defending from Dublin. And this time Kerry take the point, but the amount of chances Kerry had in that first half, goal chances, points chances, um, you know, hit a lot of opportunities wide as well, could have easily been out of sight in this game. Dublin, in many ways, I feel like let go of their tactical discipline. Bernard Brogan again, he just, he doesn't even need time. He doesn't even need time. He just picks the ball up and it's over the bar, literally. He just knows where the, where the goal is, literally. Just boom, straight away. Don't even need to look. Instinctive. Don't look at Walsh, look at this. Again, Darren O'Sullivan just going around. He's just shimmying players, he's just beating them with ease. Great finish. Paul Galvin, great point. Remember him as well. You forget how good this carry team was. So many players. Great point there from Dean Rock. Dean Rocket again, this was really the start of that core Dublin side that went on to win the five in a row. Dean Rock, Paul Mannion, Kieran Kilkenny all really started to come into the fray like in, in 2013. Some of them played in 2012, some of them played in 2011, but in 2013 was when they really, you know, made themselves known. Jack McCaffrey as well. Got that pace. Paddy Andrews. That's another brilliant point. And I think that was maybe the difference between Dublin and Kerry in this game, is that Dublin, when Kerry got into attacking positions, they, they sort of went too much for the goal. The goal chances presented them, presented themselves, and maybe Kerry were aware of that, and they were like, if we can get a couple of goals here, we can put Dublin out of sight. The difference, though, I think, was that Dublin, they seen that when the, when the points opportunities became available, Dublin would take them. They wouldn't mess around, and they were very clinical in front of goal, especially in the second half. Bernard Brogan, Paddy Andrews, Paul Mannion, they're all getting on the score sheet here and 20 minutes to go, look we're level, 17-17. I think Kerry maybe started to fade in this game as well, did they get a bit tired? Yeah, look at that, they start to give the ball away, Dublin just have a bit more energy. And I think maybe that was the difference as well, Kerry were, they were an older team, Tommaso Shea, a lot of these players coming to the end of their time. Whereas Dublin still had a lot of young players, Kieran Kilkenny, Dean Rock, Paul Mannion. Even Derek McConnelly still in their prime, still have that energy, fitness levels, conditioning. And I think that was the main difference here is Kerry faded massively. And Dublin took their goal chances as well. Look at that point by Derek McConnelly. What a player he was, by the way. I mean, Derek McConnelly, I mean, whatever you want to say about him off the pitch, on the pitch, he certainly has a loose temper. He's a bit of a loose cannon, but he's a phenomenal footballer. He might just be the best player to ever play for Dublin in my era of watching Gaelic football. And that says a lot because there's been a lot of players who could really compete with him. Not just from this team that won all Ireland's, but even players who didn't win the all Ireland, Kieran Whelan, even Jason Sherlock, I know he won it in 95, but he was a, he was like a childhood idol as well. David Moran. You forget he played in these games as well. Like David Moran playing in the uh, 2019 all Ireland final. And you forget that David Moran actually he was, he was a young player in this game. Like he was kind of he just came into the team. Played in the 2014 All Ireland final as well. We've got eight minutes to go. I remember the end of this game very well. I'm sure Kerry fans don't want to remember it. See, this is where Kerry showed their experience a bit. You know, Dublin were starting to turn the screw. They were starting to turn it around. And Kerry, similar in 2011 in some ways, where they just they just got in front, started picking away at that lead. But again, just like 2011, Dublin just seemed to find an answer out of nowhere. And of course, it's that man, Kevin McManaman. Dear McConnelly taking a big free kick here. No problem. Takes it with ease. And that's a, that's a sign of the confidence of Dublin as well. Dear McConnelly on his weak foot. Could have went with Stephen Cluxton. Cluxton definitely would have scored that. But Dear McConnelly, no problem. I'll take that. I'll put that over the bar. I think Connolly's performance against Kerry, I think in 2016, I think that was his best I've ever seen from him. Here we go, James O'Donoghue, look at that skill. Again, he just beats one or two, three players. Oh, and Declan O'Sullivan misses it. What an opportunity, what a chance. If he scores that, you never know, Kerry could have won this game. Just the momentum. 
It's still crazy to think, like, going into the 70th minute, going into the 69th minute here, the teams are still level. And Dublin Dublin went on to win by, what, five, six points? Seven points, was it, in the end? I'll have to wait and see. Look at that. See too many carry players go for the kick out there. They get completely dragged out of position. Kevin McManaman. Look at that for a finish. Sensational stuff. Look at that. Look at the hill. Incredible. Look at this from Kevin McManaman. I mean, he has options, but he just keeps his composure. He waits, he waits, he waits. Fantastic finisher. What a super sub Kevin McManaman was. What a player. I feel like Kerry fans probably have nightmares of Kevin McManaman. I really do. And this is it right here. Kerry just sort of let it... This is the moment right here where Dublin's energy levels, conditioning, fitness... It overtakes experience that Kerry have. And let's not forget Dublin beat Kerry two, year, two years previous to this as well. But now Kerry are being dragged out of position and Dublin are just picking them apart with ease. And they're cruising. They're absolutely cruising now. Darren McConnelly puts it over the bar. Four point lead. That's it now. Kerry aren't turning this around. It's game over. And maybe that was the difference as well. As Dublin took their chances in the decisive moments. They took their goal opportunities and Kerry didn't. To be fair to Kevin McManaman though, that was a tough finish as well, like, you know, if he misses that opportunity, I think a lot of people would have come back and said he, he chose the wrong option, so, I mean, that's a fantastic finish, like, Stephen Cluxton playing games here, Cluxton loves a bit of that, doesn't he? That's the thing about Cluxton, he, loves, he, just, he just loves taking the piss every now and again. Deep into out of time. See the movement to Kerry here. They can't deal with Dublin's pressure. Dublin's pressure is just... Kerry can't react to it. Darren O'Sullivan, though, look at the pace. Is he tired? Absolutely not. No way he's tired. Loops it into Kieran Donaghy, but it doesn't work. Dublin already and available to it. And you can even see by the body language of some of these Kerry players now. They, they know that this is... This is probably game over now. And to anyone watching, don't worry. I'll, I'll, re I'll react to some games where Dublin lose as well. Don't worry about that. We'll 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 do that as well. Maybe 2009. Although that's uh, I remember I remember being at that game as well. Actually, that was that was a bad game. That goal and what the first minute from Colm Cooper like that that ruined me, man. It was only I think 12 at the time, 12, 13. It wasn't good. Michael Darren McCauley. You can see here, Kerry just completely rattled. They can't get anywhere near Dublin here. Dublin with absolute ease and look at that. Doesn't score. Probably went over the line. But Dean Rock made sure of it. Brilliant finish. Settles the game with absolute ease. Seven points. I just remember that end into the game just being special. Especially on the hill. Like, well, not directly on the hill. Obviously, I was on the, the Nally stand. But, yeah. I mean, you could see. You had a perfect. Like, I was quite high up in the Nally stand as well. So, you had a perfect view of the hill. Perfect view of the whole stadium, the game. Um, and yeah, look at that. Dublin in the end, 3-18, 3-11. Jesus, what a, game, what a game that lad, that game was. Brilliant stuff. Kerry, to be fair to them, they went on to win the All-Ireland a year later. Um, and they showed that even though they were a team that was coming towards the end of their time, like the likes of Kieran Donaghy, the likes of um, Colm Cooper, Tommaso Tomas O'Shea, um, they still had the hunger in many ways, and they did still have the quality to obviously win the All-Ireland a year later. But yeah, anyway, lads, that is going to be the end of the video. Obviously, this is something different. I don't know if I'll do this all the time, but I'm not going to lie, lads, I'm bored in this lockdown. I'm very bored at the moment, and there's really nothing to do. So anyway... We're, we're going to end this here, boys. Uh, do leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, of course, I'll keep dropping the content out. I'll keep dropping the videos out. Yeah, keep dropping the comments. Keep hitting the like button. Stay safe, stay healthy. And all right, lads, I'll speak to you all soon. Good luck.